Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and in today's video we're going to go through pretty much the last six months and the six month update of my hair transplant. So I'm sure as you've already seen from the intro there's been a couple of clips from um, when I first got the transplant done to like week one, month one, month three etc etc and for the last two months I've been away in Australia so I've been having to keep on top of that regime of taking uh, certain tablets and using certain shampoos that I'm going to run through again in a sec and just making sure that I'm keeping all the general maintenance to make sure that I get the most out of the procedure. But, quick spoiler alert, I'm going to get my whole entire head shaved today just for you. Well, kind of. I want to really... Sh oh, although it looks quite full now and um, the thing that has happened is like I'm getting little wispy bits at the front just because this top bit of hair, I haven't had this bit cut since... Well, I haven't had it cut since the procedure. So I'm going to get all shaved off today just so we can see exactly how the hairline is taken and, and kind of where how far back it is compared to how it was originally. So of course I'm going to be taking you guys with me again to Barber's 47. I'm going to see my barber Ollie who's had the transplant himself. So again, it'll be good, good to see some feedback from him on how he thinks the, the transplant has taken in comparison to his. I wouldn't trust anyone else to cut my hair. So firstly, I have medication-wise still been taking uh, the vitamin complex. I do need to order some more of these it just helps with the hair growth and the fullness and then of course i have still been taking the hair power biotin five milligrams every day again just to promote the health um, and the growth of the hair so i've been taking one of these every single day for the last six months and i think that's the most important thing that people forget about is that they think they just go <coughs> get the procedure done that's it it's the aftercare where the hair will really start to transform and come along if you take care of it. And then of course, we've got the old rubber dub dub. I've still been using the hair power shampoo. I don't know how much this helps. Apparently it's anti-hair loss, so I'd just suggest it's best to use it if you can. And then the other thing that I haven't started using yet is the Dr. CYJ hair filler. So these are injections that go in the top of your head. Um, I think this will be every six months. They are or can be a little bit pricey. I'm gonna say it's wrong, but apparently it's hyaluric acids and active peptides that go into the top here just to promote um, the fullness of the hair after the procedure's been done, obviously, like six months later. Now, apparently this helps promote healthy hair, stops hair loss, strengthens the follicles, and then makes the hair stronger itself. So obviously, I'm gonna, gonna go into that. I'm gonna do that six months and 12 months through. So the next video is going to be me um, I've got to book in to a nurse or a GP just to get these injections done on the top of my head. So that should be fun. Now before we shoot off to the barbers and I get this all chopped off, um, I'm firstly going to shoot through, if you haven't seen the last video then I will put the link in the bio, that was the three month update and I had some questions about them specifically about the back of the head and the harvested area. Uh, I think I sh may have shot it in quite bad light so it probably looked worse than what it was. I'm going to attempt to give you an update now, this is probably not going to go to plan. What I'm probably best doing is giving you guys an update of the harvested area when I'm at the barbers. When I've got it all shaved and it's all cut down so you can see it properly. Again, there is still going to be a little bit of scarring there up until it can take 12 months to heal. The other thing that I was using was bio oil just to try and help it heal. Um, but I did not take that with me to Australia. So I am jumping back on that again now to help the healing process. Another question I've been asked is... Can you use creatine or whey protein? Obviously, whey protein is absolutely fine. It's just pasteurized milk. This is obviously more gym and fitness related. And creatine, I've been using creatine ever since I had the procedure done. There's no real evidence to suggest and promote that creatine promotes or aids hair loss. In fact, creatine is probably one of the, the most researched supplements on the market and I'd argue one of the safest which is why a lot of athletes, sportsmen, bodybuilders will use it and take it. Next one, why did you go to GMH? So I went to GMH purely for the fact that a lot of friends had been there. I've had a lot of good feedback from there and um, I also spoke to the guys i.e. Mike from GMH who was absolutely fantastic by the way. He's going to be more supportive because I think one of the things was why people have asked why did you not just book right directly through the clinic and that was because the support that I received from GMH the aftercare was all from the UK and with being from the UK it just gave me a lot more trust 
in the company when it came to getting my hair done. And finally, choose on hairline. So I think what this guy means is, did I get a choice on how far back it would have been? And I think I kind of explained this in the last video, you can only go as low. So if I raise my eyebrows like that, you can only go to where the muscle goes. Of course, you don't want to bring it down too low so you look like you've got no forehead and your eyebrows drawing up to your head because you're just going to look like a bit of a goon. But they will draw out a couple of lines on your head and you can, well, they'll educate you on what the best choice to go for and what will probably look the most natural. Very, very, very lastly, would I get it done again? 100%. So on that note, I'm going to shoot off my first haircut. I'm going to get clippers on this for the very first time. I've only been able to get a little bit of scissors on top because you can jeopardize pulling the roots out the front of the hair. And again, I'm only getting a cut by someone who knows what they're doing. Um, also, I'm probably going to be sneezing all over them, as you can probably tell or hear. I've got a terrible cold at the moment, so I do apologize. I sound like a bit of a mumble bum. But without further ado, I'll see you in the barbers. What's that on top? Four. Four. So that's like 13 millimetres. What, what did I have done the first time I came in? I think I did four. Did you? Okay. What should I do? Straight down the middle? Straight down the middle. No pressure. Mm. <laughs> Mole's come off there, has it? Am I doing that properly? Is it our class of No. I love what you're doing it, right? <laughs> am, I not, am I doing this right, Ollie? Yeah, you do great, though. Hey, I'll have you all a job soon. <laughs> nah, I'm going to take over. <laughs> That's what you need, isn't it? Come on, yeah. Huh? I think the question I've had the most about is the harvested area at the back. The donor area? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the donor area at the back, I mean, obviously, when you first have your, your hair transplant, it's really, really fresh and raw. You've got so much scar in that it almost can, can scare a lot of people off. But yeah. with time, I think my look better as it's gone on. Every oh. every single month that we've cut, it's looking better. It's and like better. tiny bit there. I think the thing is, uh, you've got to compromise if you want a better front of the hairline. You're gonna have a, like a little exactly. Hair. <laughs> like if you go in from something that's so. I mean, if you know, look at all cosmetic surgeries. You know, if you go and get a boob job, you've got a scar. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's you change changing something that is so minor to, to improve something so great. And what I have noticed though, and obviously you've got particularly thick hair, Yeah. what I've noticed is people that have got thicker hair tend to have different uh, types of scalp and skin on the, on the top of the head, so I think that thicker hair scars more than people with finer hair. As you can see, just an observation yeah, yeah. of what I've, I've seen, because I've probably got about four or five people now that have had them done, so just seeing the, the difference between Scars. It feels so mad having this cut because it's the first time I've done it in six months. Unreal. Oh my Jesus, it's all pulling off. See, it's, it's good that we're after taking it all the way back because you can see like where the hairline is now as well. You know, going back to what you said before there about in regards to questions of people that, you know, I'm pretty probably similar to you, I get bombarded with messages. Yeah. And the, the things that kind of, I get asked most is, can I live my day-to-day -day lifestyle during recovery? Yeah, I think that's the big thing. And I'll be very honest, my, my response is this is a, a medical procedure. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're going in and you're having your ACL done, and someone turns around to you and says, can I recover as normal? Can I still go to the gym five days a week? Or can I, can I do this, that and the other? The answer is strictly, no, you can't. I think it's massively, it's massively dependent on what your job is as well. If you're sitting like an office desk where you're sitting at home doing work, obviously it's, it's easy to do. Nothing will change, you know. Yeah. But if you're doing labour or manual work or stuff like that, where you've got to... That's where you've got to make the decision of, you know, hard hats in work. Yeah. Can you physically exert, like, for example, yourself, you probably have to take two weeks, three weeks off heavy lifting before yeah, yeah. you. I didn't do anything. I had to work on 40%, weeks. 30%. Because you don't want to pop the follicle. And then we're just walking about then for like two weeks just to sort of keep my activity and stuff up. Getting your steps. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Yeah. Yeah.
welcome back guys and that is a fresh trim fresh prints of Bel Air done so I'm a mega mega happy with how that has turned out that was the first time I've had the top of my haircut for six months which feels a bit weird but um, I'm kind of glad I got this short because you can really see how well the hairline now looks into comparison to what it was which I'll try and pull, pull, pull up an image of um, I'm sure you've probably got a good glimpse of what the scoring actually looks like now. Like I was speaking to Ollie about during when I was getting my hair cut. Um, there's still a bit of scoring there now. I'll probably take up to 12 months to heal. Continue using the bio oil. But I think um, I've always been willing to sacrifice a little bit of what the back of my head looks like compared to what the front, which is what I was more um, not conscious of, but w aware of. Especially whilst doing vlogs and on my phone and stuff or recording little bits of footage and content. So um, I'm mega, mega happy. The next call for me now is going to be getting the injections done in the front of my head, which I will record the video for. So if you enjoyed this video and it was insightful, please give it a massive thumbs up and a like. And whilst you're there, please hit that little red button with the bell on to subscribe to make sure that you catch the next video. If any of you have any questions in regards to the hair transplant, the procedure, um, booking in with GMH, certain bits or anything you're not sure of in general, just drop them in the comments box below and um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But I'll catch you, I'll catch you in the next video guys.